everybody. Uh, this is Brian Enton with News Nation. Uh, I'm joined by Natasha Zubis. Uh, and I hope everybody's having a good week. I know it's Friday. It's been sort of a crazy news week with everything happening with the, uh, the gunman on the loose in New York City and um, all the um, Trump developments and appointments and everything else. Um, but I'm really excited to, to talk to you guys today and to be joined by Natasha because one of the cool things about what we do at About News Nation is we do stories that um, are really, really important uh, that no one else is covering. And you can put on any of the channels right now and find out about the headlines of the day and the manhunt and everything else we talked about. But obviously there are things happening in our country that um, are sometimes even more important than what you see on the other channels uh, that don't get the coverage. And that's why I'm so excited to talk to Natasha because she has a big special that she's been working on for two years um, coming up Saturday night, um, so tomorrow, uh, 9 o'clock Eastern, um, and it's called Growing Broke, Forever Chemicals in America's Heartland, um, and it's, it's so important. It impacts all Americans, uh, and I can't, I can't wait. I've seen a few little clips, Natasha, um, but give us a little bit of the lowdown what you've been working on for two years and what people can expect. Uh, Brian, thank you so much. And I know that we've been talking throughout these two years as well, um, every milestone and step of the way. You know, this has been... This this is one of the biggest stories that we're not talking about, I think. And to your point, and for everyone listening right now, there is a 97% chance that this chemical is already in their blood and they likely have no idea. And so we're focusing in on this because farmers across the country are being destroyed by this. And as you said, it's impacting the food all of us eat. It is in our drinking water. It is in our bodies. And so if we step back and, and explain quickly, as you alluded to, we are starting to hear more and more about forever chemicals, right? They are linked with cancer. They are linked with serious health issues, impact on the liver and the thyroid, fertility, et cetera. These forever chemicals, through no fault of our own, um, you and me, chemical companies uh, have some, some explaining to do, are all around us. They are used to make things Stain resistant, grease resistant, water resistant. It's in our pizza boxes, our dental floss, our coffee cups, makeup and fire retardant, our carpets and couches and Scotch Guard and our nonstick Teflon pans, you name it. It's it's everywhere. But here at News Nation, Brian, we're exposing one way forever chemicals are getting into our food supply. And that's what we're really focusing on tomorrow night at 9 p.m. Eastern. So what are forever chemicals? Yeah, uh, forever chemicals are a man-made chemical um, that make things stain resistant and uh, water resistant and grease resistant, as we were just talking about. It's in all of these household products, all of these industrial applications. But how is it getting onto farmland is, is really the question we're zeroing in on. Because American farmers for decades now in all 50 states were told that they were doing their civic duty by spreading a fertilizer called sludge, that is treated human sewage, onto their fields so that the so-called biosolid waste wouldn't go into landfills. This is bad stuff to have in a landfill. So let's put it on our most valuable cropland. And Brian, the EPA has never and still does not require this sludge to be tested for forever chemicals first. And so we're seeing farmer after farmer coming forward to News Nation now realizing their land is terribly contaminated with this human made chemical linked with cancer that never breaks down in the environment. The farmers are finding their own blood is high in forever chemicals. And of course, the specter of all of the health issues that comes along with that, their milk and their meat and everything they sell to us, their livelihood is ruined. There's virtually no safety net for them. And Brian, all of us are being impacted by the food that we eat, the milk that we drink, the meat, even organic food is not immune to this. So I mean, to make sure I understand this right, because it is crazy. So the sludge has like human feces in it. Is that what you're saying? Human, human feces, but it's also industrial runoff that's been that's gone to a water treatment facility. And because it's in all of our homes, think about if you clean the carpet, if you wash your athleisure that is stain resistant in the washing machine, all of that water also goes to the water treatment facility. They settle out the solids from that, treat it, do not test it for forever chemicals. And that fertilizer is spread directly on farmland. In all 50 states, this has been done. 48 states today still do this. And so when you were doing this investigation for two years, and again, it's going to air tomorrow night, nine o'clock Eastern on, on News Nation, a full hour. Um, I, I saw a few snippets of it. I mean, you found that there were farmers um, who had to like literally kill all of their livestock. Oh, Brian, there, there is a man who will stay on my heart forever. 
And that is Fred Stone, a dairy farmer from Maine. This is his grandfather's dairy farm. 114 years this farm has been in his family. Totally destroyed by this, as you said. He loves these cows so much. He knows all of their personalities. He gives them names like Moonbeam and Storm Chaser. And he is now thousands of gallons of tainted milk dumped down the drain. We watched him do this. To what you just said, he had to euthanize. He had to shoot and kill 80% of his beloved cows. He went $1.5 million in debt trying to save his farm. And Brian, I asked him what keeps him up at night. And he says his father and grandfather have already passed and he knows he will see them one day. And he doesn't know how he will explain to them what has happened to the farm that they entrusted him with. That is what keeps him up at night. They thought he was an isolated case. He was told that he was just a unicorn. He was just the first. He's being called a hero now because- So how did he know? Like, how did he know there Natasha? Was random, that they yeah. So they're, they're, they fall into different categories. There are, there are farmers like the rancher in Texas who I just spoke with yesterday, Tony Coleman, um, where they're seeing their animals getting sick and die right in front of their eyes. He's had almost 50 of his animals die so far. And then there are others where it's silent, it's quiet, uh, like on a dairy farm. There was a random innocuous water test that was done near his land that came back sky high for Fred Stone with, with, with um, Forever Chemicals. And then he voluntarily tested the rest of his land because he wanted to figure out what was going on. He said he understands why other American farmers are not jumping to do this. He says it is like handing them a gun, a loaded gun and asking them to shoot you. He says it's been financial suicide. Oh, I can only imagine when you have to shoot and kill all of your your livestock and basically shut your your farm down. So that's that's dairy milk that we would have been drinking had it not been discovered. Exactly. And, you know, we just don't know the level of PFAS or forever chemicals that is in our food. Um, and it's in organic food, because even if this land was sludged one time in 1950 or 1970, it is likely still there in the gets wicked up by the spinach or other things that grow on it. And just because pesticides are not put on top of that organic spinach, it doesn't mean the soil underneath it is not still heavily tainted with forever chemicals. Mm. Well, I want to play um, uh, a clip, a, a montage of some of what people can expect for Saturday night. I get it's so important, especially with people get so wrapped up in everything else going on. But this is something that actually impacts our food supply, impacts all of us. Let's take a little, uh, 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 let's go watch it at a little bit of your special and then we can talk about it. Thanks. EPA, FDA, political leaders, where have you been? How did you miss this? That now we have an entire country, an entire country that could potentially be in peril from this forever chemical that's destroyed your land, destroyed our farming, destroyed our water, and destroyed public health and welfare. Wow. There's so much sadness and anger. This has broken our hearts and crushed our spirit. And I don't know if we'll ever get that back. Told their farms are shot through with chemicals linked with liver damage, damage to fertility, thyroid issues, and cancer. All of this land has been poisoned, water contaminated, all of these people touched by this called forever chemicals because they are nearly impossible to destroy. Prime soil, crops, milk tainted in the heartland, leaving many farmers on the brink of ruin. Suicide among dairy farmers and farmers in general is incredibly high because a lot of these farms, a third, fourth, and fifth generation, you are gonna be the person to lose it. Your great, great, great grandfather cleared the land and you are going to be the person to have a bankruptcy auction because you can't hold on to the land. This is the story of how their farmland was destroyed right out from under them. Greed, money. We'll take you to ground zero of where it all began. You never wanted to be an activist. I just wanted to milk our cows and be left to hell alone. And show you how far back the paper trail goes. When they had the choice of do we go public with this or do we sweep it under the rug, they chose the rug. And with these chemicals now impacting 97% of Americans, according to the CDC, what you and your family need to know. I am glad News Nation is looking into this problem. All of us, the entire country, will deal with the fallout. Wow. I mean, it's, it's really alarming. I was just thinking to myself, Natasha, there's the farms that you found and that you covered in the places where the testing was done, but 
based on what you've um, learned, do you think there's a ton that we don't even know? Yeah. Like uh, farms out there where we're eating the food every day and, and these chemicals are, are in what we're consuming? So the EWG estimates um, that perhaps 20 million American cropland acres may be contaminated with forever chemicals. Um, we're talking about all 50 states. And 48, you, you, one thinks when we know better, we do better. 48 states are still doing this right now. And not only did we speak to Aaron Brockovich, who you saw, you know, in this piece, of course, made famous a household name by that Julia Roberts Oscar winning movie. Um, you know, as an advocate, she is painting this as our next big fight. She says the storm is already here. And she points the finger not only at chemical companies, but at federal agencies saying, EPA, other agencies, where have you been? You know, we, we hear her say this. How did how did you miss this? Tomorrow night, Brian, in this doc, in this um, hour long special, we're going through the paper trail and we're actually showing you the documents that show what chemicals knew, what chemical companies knew and did not tell us when they knew it. And also the EPA um, had indication by 1998 uh, that there was something seriously wrong and they still do not require that uh, sludge is tested for forever chemicals. I went to DC, I, I sat down with the EPA. I asked them why they're, why they're not doing more to protect us. All of that is, is tomorrow night. I just think about the current times and RFK Jr. Um, you know, as one of the uh, the Trump nominees and and his issues with chemicals, and he's been calling this stuff out for for a long time. Um, are there any plans you think to to fix this, to change this? I, I mean, now is is such an interesting time. It is it is a wild, wild west um, moment. I don't think there is anything wrong with asking questions. Just because something has been done the same way for decades and decades and decades doesn't mean that it's right. And, you know, we, we saw a clip of this. I got my own blood tested uh, on camera because I try really hard, Brian. I use non-toxic products, non-toxic makeup. I eat organic. But the fact is that 97% of us, through no fault of our own, have this in our blood now. It's in 45% of our drinking water, at least according to the USGS. So while chemical companies made billions, billions in profits from selling these products, it is the American farmers, it is you and I, it is the American people who will be paying the price for this. Wow, yeah, it's it's a lot. And I know you lay it all out uh, an hour. So it's an, it's, tell me a little more, it's an hour special yeah, so it, it is. It has been a two-year-long investigation. It is finally airing tomorrow night, Saturday night, 9 p.m. Eastern, on News Nation. Um, as I said, this is the most important reporting I've had the privilege of doing in my career so far. I am so grateful that we are at an organization that put the resources behind this kind of deep dive and this kind of storytelling, um, and and exposing these kinds of truths. There are a lot of people who do not want the story to be told. So people can go to joinnn.com, joinnn.com to find out how they can watch, uh, how they can find News Nation. And I will be there tomorrow night, 9 p.m. Eastern. I, I hope to see them there. Yeah, I'm excited, Natasha. Uh, great work. I'll be watching tomorrow night. And like you said, I mean, I think this is one of those stories you won't see on the other networks that are covering the same thing over and over again and ignoring really, really big issues in our country. And I think it's one of the reasons we both came to work at News Nation. That's why I was excited to talk to you about this, because uh, this is what we get passionate about, you know, uncovering things like this. So uh, hopefully everybody will check it out nine o'clock tomorrow night. I know Natasha's got to run uh, and um, we'll talk soon. Thank you, Natasha. Thanks Appreciate everybody for watching. I hope everybody has a great weekend. See you guys.